Good morning, everyone. Let's start today's class. Today we're going to focus on the financial statement analysis for the company. And to start our lecture today, I would like to show you some real business annual report which I downloaded just yesterday. Okay? One of those business called Vodafone. Okay? I know most of you heard that company. You, I probably saw the advertisements of the company all around the world. And that's the annual report I downloaded from the website or the website of the company for year 2012. It's a long report, uh, in total about 176 pages. Okay? And uh, in this report you can find a lot of pictures and you can also have the main information of the company for the year of 2012 or for the uh, accounting year. Okay? And uh, what I want you to understand is the financial report of the company. Okay? We have the yes. That's the financial reports of the company here. This shows us the balance sheets of Vodafone for year 2012. Okay? It starts with the fixed assets, current assets, net current assets and shareholders' equity. Okay? Remember these points. Okay. It has several main column or main item of net uh, fixed asset and current asset. There's no liability at all. Or in the I or I explicitly show in the table. Okay? Let's show you another, another annual report of American company, okay, which is called AT&T. It is also a famous a, a, a communication or mobile phone company in the United States as well as around the world. Okay? That's the annual report of AT&T, also about 100 pages long. Let's show you, let me show you the annual report. Page 16, we have the on the right hand side, you have the balance sheets of AT&T in year 2012. Here you can see we have asset. Okay? We have a liability just in full, and we also have shareholders' equity. Okay? From those, we compare those two annual reports. They are called annual reports. However, the format are not the same. The reason is that Waterfall Company mainly follows the UK uh, general accounting principle. However, the at &T, it follows the U.S. gap. Okay? From showing those two examples, probably you want to say that, first of all, okay, we need a same accounting principle or same accounting rules for us, the investor, to understand those accounting reports. Secondly, it is an interesting question for you to think about, because we're going to talk about that question in the following of the course. Okay? It's about 100 pages long, about 200 pages long. It costs a company allowed to produce those kind of reports. But why does a company still produce these kind of reports? Okay? One reason is that this is regulation. The government I want companies to produce the report or requires the company to produce the report. That's one reason. The second reason is that some scholars argue that the company themselves would like to produce this kind of report or they want to produce the report. They have the incentives to produce those long reports. Why? Okay. In this course, we talk about the cost of capital. Okay. We talk about liquidity. Because by producing those kind of reports, which is, can provide more information to investors, the company can lower their cost of capital as well as increase their liquidity for the year. But we are going to talk about that in the future, not today. Today we'll focus on this. Okay, the equation, which is the basic equation, not only for accounting, but I, I, I also for finance, corporate finance. 
Okay? Let's remind you, what is this equation? What does A stand for? R sign. So very good. Then L. Liabilities. S E stand for shareholders. Activities. Okay? We have different columns on the table. And I just show you only a very simple example. Let me give you an example. For instance, most of you come from different country. I, I, you join your friend's party today for the weekend, but you do like the Chinese Baijiu. It is not good. It is too strong. You probably like water gun. And you probably like, uh, what else do you have? Tequila. Yeah? However, it is not that easy to buy those uh, foreign wines in China. Okay, after your study of financial accounting, management accounting, corporate finance, you probably think about why do I operate my own business to import those wines, those bottles from outside China and then I sell in China. I would like to open my own business. Okay, that's you here. But you do not have money. You do not have money to produce those inventory. You do not have money to produce those products. You go to your parents, you go to your father, you go to your dad, you talk with your dad that you want to open a business in China, but you do not have money, you want his support. After analysis, probably, your father decides, yes, I can give you money, but I want to be a part of your company. Otherwise, your, pap, yeah, your dad wants to own your company as well. Okay? That's from the shareholders' equity. Your dad gives you investment. Okay? Which is as a shareholder. Okay? You receive investment from your father. And, however, that fund is not enough. You want more money. The other way you can go is to go to the bank, a local bank. You talk with the manager of the bank and they uh, tell them your idea, which is excellent. But the bank decides to lend you money. Okay? In other words, you can borrow money from the bank. That's only one I. Example of raising capital. We have a lot of examples of raising capital. However, we'll talk about that in the future. But right now, I would like you to understand you can get money from your parents or other investors or shareholders. You can also get the money or fund from a bank. Okay? After you get all those money, what you have to do is to buy those uh, water guy or things. From your country. Okay? I use those funds rice to buy the R site. Okay? There are lots of elements or components in the R site. We have cash. You need to hold cash on your hand for some uh, uh, reasons, for some emergency reasons. Otherwise, you will have inventory. Those water going bought, and so on and so forth. Okay? That's your R site. How could you do with those R sites you bought? Okay? The main purpose is to sell them in China to make money. Yeah? Then what you want to do is to sell the money. Sorry, to sell the inventory to make money. or revenue or sales. Yes? That's the money you make. That's the money by selling those water or tequila or those wines in China. After you got those money, what do you have to do? A part of the money you can keep them in your pocket. It's your profit. However, Another big part of the money or profit you make, you have to pay back those banks as well as 
your parents or other your masters in forms of one interest plus the principal. The bank will not lend you money without receiving any interest on the money you borrowed. Okay? The other one, you need to pay those shareholders or those uh, people who invest in your company the dividend. Yeah, the dividend payment. Okay? That's a cycle as you can see. If you want to extend your little shop or little company, you need to borrow from those two sides or you need to raise funds from those two sides. And then you go to the shop again. You go to a cycle again and then after you make money, you deliver your profit to those two parts. Okay? That's the fundamental of accounting. Now let me show you the fundamental of finance. Mainly you'll have three parts here. Let's post those two parts again. Okay? Liability plus shareholders equity. In terms of finance, these two parts telling me the capital structure of a company. Or tell me the capital structure of your little company. And this tells me Capital structure in finance. Yeah. Your company has more debt, or your company issues more shares. Those two sides tell me exactly that important issues. Okay. Another thing you can see from this side. Our site, as what we know, and from here as well, we have current our site. What are current our site? Well, give me an example of current our site. The most important example of current our site is very good, cash. Okay? Other than cash, we also have <coughs> other current, sorry, our site, like fixed our site, long term our site, long term investment. In a company, the company makes a lot of long-term investment. The company can buy shares of other companies. The company can, can buy bonds issued by other companies. They invest in those long-term investments. And this part tells me how the company engaged in those long-term investments, which in terms of finance, I call it capital budgeting. Yeah, that's one part. From those long-term investments, I know the company's capital budgeting. The other part, focus on the current asset. As we said, we have a cash for current outside. We also have account receivables. Uh, we also have prepaid expenses, so on and so forth. Okay? The notion behind those current outside is this. We need to use those items in the daily business operations. Okay? From day to day, I need cash. I need cash probably to pay my supplier, I need cash probably to pay the bill and so on and so forth. I need cash. I want to know how could I use those I, I, I counter outside for daily operations. Okay? In terms of those count outside, In terms of finance, I call it net capital management. Management. Okay. <coughs> A 
in the core of these graphs, we talk about accounting. In the core of these graphs, we talk about how could you finance your little shop, your little company, but outside okay, this graph, we know the key concept of corporate finance. Okay? You can show this graph to your father and say, I need money to invest in this little shop, and I believe your father will give you money anyway. Okay? That's about in general. We studied accounting, we're going to study corporate finance, and that's the relationships. However, there are lots of uh, minor uh, important issues we need to cover this semester. Okay? Let's focus on topics of today, which is financial statements and cash flows. Okay? We I try to cover the, all the statements in the annual report, their key elements, as well as the importance of cash flows. It starts with the balance sheet. It is most important concepts in terms of balance sheets. The balance sheet actually shows you a point of the company. Okay? For instance, uh, the physical year for a company is at the end of, say, uh, uh, 2001. And then the balance sheet shows me how the company performs in terms of assets, liability, shareholders, equity, at that day only. Okay? It is for snapshots at specific points in time. Okay? That's for the balance sheet, and the most important balance sheet identity, as I showed here, are signed. always equals liability plus shareholders' equity. Okay? That's the most fundamental equation in accounting, and today, as you can see, also in corporate finance. And that's the assets. Let's discuss a very simple example. And this annual report is very simple. It just shows you the main elements should be covered in the report. It is not real, it's just for use. A simple example. And they, on your left hand side, you have the asset side. Total assets, we have current assets, fixed assets, and the total assets. On your right hand side, you have the liability plus shareholders' equity. Okay? As we discussed, those fingers from two sides must be equal always, forever. Okay? Folks, on the assets side, we have this. Okay? Uh, the outside list is in order by length of time. Okay? It would normally take a form with going operations to convert them into cash. In other words, they follow an order. What is the order? Liquidity. I put the most liquid assets on the first line, just below the current asset. As we discussed, the most liquid asset is cash. Yes, clearly cash is much more liquid than property, plants, and equipment. Okay? Cash is current asset, and property, plant, equipment, the factory you owned, uh, the equipment you bought, and the, uh, uh, and, and the plants you uh, land, for instance, they are all long-term assets, or they are all fixed assets. That's for the balance sheet, and in order to analyze this balance sheet for the financial managers, okay, they probably will think about the following three concerns. Starting with the liquidity, that's versus <coughs> equity, and value versus cost. We'll go through those three elements in brief. 
Okay? Liquidity. By definition, liquidity usually refers to ease and quickness with which assets can be converted to cash without significant loss in their value. Okay? That's the basic definition for liquidity. Okay? For a company, probably when you analyze a company, the most important thing you will focus on is how liquid does this company is. Okay? If the company is now liquid, holding too much long-term assets, the company will not operate well in extreme circumstances, for instance, financial crisis. Okay? And we have the current assets, most liquid, in order of cash inventory. Okay? As here, pay attention uh, on the treatment of inventory. In some companies, they may hold inventory more than a year or for several years, some specific type of company. <coughs> but in terms of counting, we always treat inventory as our current asset. Okay? Then we have a country saleable short term investment, prepaid expense, or other current assets. And a, a, on the asset side, we also have some fixed assets, as I said, a plant, equipment, property, and that's tangible assets. Well, that's tangible long-term assets. The tangible asset is something we can see, something we can touch. We also have some intangible assets, something obviously you cannot see. Those intangible assets include Goodwill includes trademarks, includes patents, and so on and so forth. Okay? Although those assets are intangible, they cannot be seen. However, those intangible assets have value to the company. Okay? Then we have a yes, the more liquid as I discussed, the more liquid the form is the more safer the firm is in terms of really extreme circumstance. Okay? It tells you that a, a, the firm a, is less likely to a, a experience problem meeting short-term liabilities. We need to keep certain current assets on our hands as a form when we have some short-term problems. However, there's one problem. You cannot hold too much current assets on our hands. If you decide, I want to save, then I hold a lot of cash on my hand. It is waste of resource because you can invest those cash into good projects. Therefore, you have a trade-off. That trade-off is this. However, liquid assets frequently have lower rates of return than those fixed assets. If you have too much cash, you will lose those return on investing on those long-term assets instead. See, that's a trade-off. Some company wants growth. Right? Some company wants to hold lots of money. Which is best? Or which is better? We do not know yet. We will discuss those things in the future of the course. Okay? That's liquidity confirmed. We also have uh, debt versus equity. And as I discussed, uh, the debt and equity that was tell, telling me the capital structure of the company as a set. And here, I just want to you to understand only one point: the difference between the debtor and the creditor. Sorry, between the creditors and the shareholders. And the creditors, they're always banks sometimes. Shareholders and investors, for instance, your debt, you're relevant. Okay, and the creditors, when you make money, 
Well, when your company makes money, you have to pay them firstly. Okay? If you have money, you have to pay them interest plus principal. And sometimes, you have to pay them. Okay? No matter you make money or not. Therefore, when you are a creditor, you always reserve, receive the first claim of the firm's cash flow. And you some really bad time when your company go bankrupt, and those guys firstly claim those returns from your company for liquidation. And shareholders, on the other hand, what left in the company, they have to claim on those resources or materials. Okay? In terms of here, I have to pay my bank's interest and principal firstly. If I have some money left, then I can decide to pay dividends to my shareholders. Therefore, always creditor first, then followed by shareholders. Okay? At this point, I just want you to make you understand the difference between those two players in the company. Okay? Then we have the value versus cost. Under the U.S. GAAP, or General Accepted Accounting Principles, as well as the Chinese GAAP. Okay? Under any report, on the account, uh, asset side, for the equipment we bought, for the uh, factory we bought, we record those value as the historical cost. Okay? I bought this building, it cost me about uh, 10 million yuan today. Okay? I just put those 10 million on my book. 10 years later, this boat building may, uh, uh, has a market value of 100 million yuan. However, on my book, they, a value or the historical value of the building is still 10 million yuan, okay? which is the historical value used for accounting. However, the international financial report standard treats uh, those fixed assets differently. They allow those uh, assets should be reviewed annually based on their market <coughs> value. And what is market value? The value is not historical value, but based on the market fluctuation or perception of your property. The market may think about your building worth more than 10. Then you, I, the value of your fixed asset increases. Okay? And market value is the price at which the asset liability equity could actually be bought or sold. And this is completely different concept from the uh, a book value or historical cost uh, of the asset. Yeah? That's two different concepts. And most, uh, not most, in the US and China, they, uh, uh, they got focus on the historical cost instead of using the market value. Okay? And that's the Third issue of balance sheets. Okay? In terms of income statement, okay? our graph can also show the importance of income statements. I post the income statement where? Where should I post our graph? On the top or bottom? On the top, yes. Because it's here. I make money, and how could I tell you I make money? I need to prepare a report. I need to prepare a report to show you I'm making money this year. Therefore, based on your action, I issued the income statement. I issued an income statement telling my investor whether I make money or not this year. That's the rule for the income statement. And that's the uh, statement we would like to talk about. In comparison with the uh, balance sheet, the income statement 
tells you the performance of the company for the whole accounting year, for the whole accounting period. It is normally for the year, or for half a year, or for a quarter or something. Okay? It is not at a specific point, it's for the whole year, or whole period. And there's also, uh, also an equation which you need to memorize or you need to be familiar with to understand its important relationship. In income statement is that you use the total sales or revenue minus expenses always equals to the net profit or income. Okay? That's how much money you make as revenue expenses. Okay? How much money you spend in order to make those revenue? If you make more than the expense, then you make a lot. You make money. In other words, if you make less than you spend, you lost money. Okay? And then also something we need to concern as financial manager uh, by understanding the items in the income statement, starting with those. Okay? The total sales, cost of goods sold, selling, general administrative tax, depreciation, operating income, so on and so forth. And those items telling you the operation section of your company. You're selling water gun. Okay? How many bottles of water gun you sell? At what price? Tells you the total revenue. What is the import price for you to pay of buying those water guns? That's the cost of goods sold. You probably need to hire someone <coughs> to promote your product, and that's the selling general administrative expense. You probably will buy a warehouse or place to store your water gun. Then you have depreciation for your building. You probably need so it has other kind of income. Okay? We, not, we do not show it here, but we have other kind of income here. But in total, we have the operating income. Okay? And then we have, for the rest, we have the non-operating section of income statements includes all the financial cost, interest. Okay? You need to borrow from the bank to buy more water back. You need to borrow probably uh, from other persons. Okay? Then you need to pay them interest. And in that section, in the statement, shows you how much money you need to pay them as interest. And finally, we have another section which shows you the tax. Okay? And uh, that's the tax we need to pay. Every company in any country, they need to pay taxes. They need to pay different taxes. They need to pay the local government, the central government, and other authority taxes. And that's the important element in corporate finance as well as accounting for taxation. And finally, when you've got all those calculations, hopefully you can have a positive figure which shows you the net income. Yeah, that's the net income for this company. And uh, for the uh, next two line, they are retained earning as well as dividends. In this year, we can say the company pays dividends to their shareholders, which is about 43. Okay. That's more or less about an income statement. For the analysis, we need to understand the Local accounting principle, the no cash item and time <coughs> cost, we just go through those briefly. Yeah? For the general gap, those tells you the importance of one principle in accounting, which is matching principle. In other words, you need to <coughs> match your revenue earned with those expenses. 
It is not based on the actual cash principle. It's based on the matching principle. In other words, an asset liability revenue expenses should be recognized when transaction that cost them occurs. When it happens, I need to recognize those transactions. Pay attention, not necessarily when cash is paid or received. Let me give you a very simple example. For instance, I am your customer of your shop. You work at that shop. I come to your shop and I'm your old good customer. And I come to your shop, I just pick up one bottle of water and then I walk away. Because you know me. Okay? You know me that I have the ability to pay you later. Okay? You can just let me to take one bottle with me and go. Okay? I can pay you later. In this case, when I take your water gun, left your shelf, you recognize the revenue you made immediately. However, you didn't receive any cash. Okay? You recognize revenue on the other side, you increase your account receivable. You're going to collect cash from me later. Yeah? That's the matching principle we talk about here. Okay? I do not need to pay you cash, you do not need to receive cash, okay? but transaction happened. When transaction happens, we need to record them. Okay? That's for the income statement. And the, the no cash items, there are also some no cash items we talk about, and depreciation shows you in the income statement. As I said, you will need to buy a warehouse to store your water that. Therefore, you will have depreciation on those property. Those depreciation not cash, but we deduct them from our income statement. Okay? Other than depreciation for the tax. Okay? Luckily enough, as a company, we, although we need to pay tax to the government, but we do not need to pay them now. We can defer the tax payment later. Probably one month or one year, depends on the government. Okay? Therefore, by taking all those together and our little example together, we'll give you one clue, one important clue here. The net income is not Definitely not, not cash. Okay? You probably make a million of net income at the end of year 2012. However, you cannot make statements and make a million of cash receivement at the end of the year. No. Because income statement contains a lot of non-cash items. Okay? <laughs> And then finally, we have the time and the cost. As we discussed in the short one, certain equipment resources, commitments of form are fixed. They will be not challenged. They are fixed, as we discussed. And drawing a graph here, why is they are fixed? But Excel is my activity. But why is the dollar of cost? Okay? No matter what kind of activity you did over the year, and those costs are constant, they are fixed. Okay? I just bought equipment. Okay? Within the relevant range, no matter how many water guards or how many shoes or how many products you made, okay, the cost for the equipment is constant. The cost for the building is constant. However, pay attention to this slide. Second point, in the long run, okay, all in terms of production or all the costs are relevant, sorry, are variable. Why? We have a fixed cost here. They will not change within the relevant range. 
Why I said long run, they are variable. They will change because of this. Okay? We see the relevant branch. It is con constant. It is fixed. How about outside the relevant branch? Probably I need to upgrade my equipment. I need to pay more on those equipment. Therefore, in long run, my equipment will be increased like this. <laughs> And I don't know when my equipment may increase like this. In another year, I need to keep upgrading my equipment that will increase like this. Okay? It will never constant. The fixed cost will be never fixed. In the long run, it will be increased. It will be like variable cost. Okay? And they What's else? Yes, in terms of financing, we do not distinguish fixed cost and variable cost. No. In terms of income statement, you will not find item name fixed cost or variable cost. However, in terms of financial accounting or accounting, we do actually distinguish what is called product cost and period cost. What is product cost? It's all the costs in relation with the production of the product. For instance, raw material, the rack labor, what else? Start with M. Manufacturer overhead, very good. Yeah? For the period cost, they are non manufacturing costs, like a, the, a, the promotion I will give, and those, all the costs unrelated with the production. But pay attention with this one. Interesting, but important. Okay? The concept is important. And we have, yes, I, like I said, I have taxation, but I will not go to, into detail to do. Uh, the tax. It's out of the boundary of our understanding of study. But you need to know that tax is always changed. The government gives different tax rates per year or per time, but give a lot of different tax items and so on. And we have different calculations regarding tax, like a, a Manjuru and average tax station. Okay. What you need to understand, tax is important, tax is changed. Okay. Based on how much money you make per year. And what else we have? Yes, that's another important issue in today's course. We will introduce the concept of net working capital. We know from the graph earlier, the working capital is here, the current asset. And we know the current asset includes cash, the country receivable, short-term investment, prepaid expenses, and so on and so forth. But this concept telling you the net working capital, which calculates it by using the formula here. Net working capital equals, always equals to current assets minus current liability. Okay. We need to use the, which is cash, inventory, prepaid expenses, so on and so forth. So minus accounts payable, a, a accrued expenses payable, unearned revenue, and so on and so forth. In other words, I need to know the difference between current assets and current liability. Why I need to know the difference? If I have a positive difference, what is telling me? If I got a negative difference, it is a bad thing. But I can tell you it is a bad thing. Okay? Which means you cannot have the resource to pay you that which will be finished or material in short term. Okay? If I have a positive difference, okay? Uh, the positive networking capital means cash. Okay? That will become valuable 
why I said that cars will become valuable because I can, with not big locks, transfer all those current assets in short time to cash. Okay, that's why I said cash will become valuable over next 12 months. We will be greater than the cash will be paid out. Okay, current liability I'm going to pay. Current asset I can receive cash. I need to make sure in short term, within next 12 months, I have enough cash, I have enough resources to pay my debt. And then finally we have, normally this is not always the case, usually, okay, the change in net working capital <coughs> is positive in growing forms. And before we finish, and I want, just want to show you this example. This is exactly the same example uh, as we talked about at the uh, beginning of this lecture. It is balance sheet, year 2009-2010. And here I want to uh, I, I draw your attention on the current asset and the current liability only. Okay? That's the figure I want to calculate. Start with the blue. The blue telling you in year 2009, I use current assets, which is a, a 707 minus the current liability of 2009, which is 455, and telling me the net, a, 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 the net working capital in year 2009. The right line just telling me the net working capital in year 2010. Okay? And that's the calculation here. And one more step we can do, we can use the net working capital in year 2010 to minus the finger in year 2009. Okay? We got, which is positive finger, about 23 million US dollars. In other words, I can make the conclusion or the conclude that I made investment on those net current assets or on those working capital in year 2010. Okay? I make more investment on the working capital in year 2010, which is this. Okay. The increase of 23 indicated the investments of form in net working capital. Okay. And that's more or less the thing we talked about today. And uh, we need to continue to focus on the cash flow statement, which is one of the most important elements in terms of corporate finance. Because, before finish, I tell you a notion that in accounting we have a lot of statements. We have annual reports. In terms of corporate finance, what I'm interested in is probably more about cash. How much cash I received, how much cash I paid. Okay? And that's the end of today's lecture. Thanks for your participation. Oh, thank you.